All right, guys, I haven't seen a lot of tutorials on how to set up in a set of Corso server with teleportation and like the no hezi type of traffic. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do that and some troubleshooting along the way in case you guys get stuck on some certain parts. You go to this website, download, go to GitHub, it'll send you to GitHub, go to the 64, open that up. This is important, do not put this in your set of course uh, root folder, it won't work. This was an old test now. So we're gonna take these files and just move it into here. Then we're gonna go to content manager, go to settings appearance and enable the server tab. Click into the server tab, click on create a new server, this is gonna be like a preset and you could name it choose your map right click this hit folder and it'll take you to this folder just have this open in the background it's gonna make it a lot easier if you want to put a password You don't need to put a password, but you should put an admin password. You can click this off. Require CSV to join. Up the amount of packets to 60 and the threads to 4. If your computer can handle it, you should put it to the max. If you're running, uh, if you intend to play on the computer that you're running the server on, keep it at 4. If you're running it on a platform online put it as high as you want as high as they're allowing you to and you're paying for and click the save button go to session disable race qualification and put practice time to whatever you want it's going to loop anyway save the conditions can be the same. The rules will change the realism down. Save. And then the entry list. This is where we're going to add traffic and the cars that we are able to drive. The amount of cars that you're going to add will dictate how much density the traffic will be and how many cars spawn in. Though we can manually override that in settings. Um, this is a lot of cars and a lot of work just for an example, but it's okay. Uh, I'll give myself two playable cars and one for my friend. And in case you see this error of pack data, like you can't pack the data, uh, there is a way to do this, but it is a manual way. And so you'll have to wait till the end to see this. Once we have all the cars for traffic that we want and some playable cars, we'll go into CSP, allow to change color and pits and allow teleporting and then copy these tweaks. There's 20 entries. So we go back to the main and change the capacity to 20 or anything above. From here, we'll click pack and then save. We're going to take the files from the test server and copy and drag them into the folder from the desktop. A Seto server will start, but it's not going to load anything because we don't have any files. We can get rid of this now. You're going to want to make a new folder and call it content. Then in the content folder, We'll make a cars and tracks. From there, a CSP. And in the CSP, you're going to put the track. Remember how we pulled this up from before? Copy this and paste it into here. 
when you paste it, go into the actual overlay and there will be a data folder here. If there's an AI folder here, delete it and replace it with the one that I provided in the description. It'll have a fast lane. This is compatible with this track and this track alone. I'm not sure about any other tracks, but maybe FTR. Once you've done that, start the Acetal server. If that does not happen, if the Acetal server does not pop up, and it just automatically quits, then go into your search bar and search in Event Viewer. Go to Windows Logs and then Applications. Filter Current Logs to .NET Runtimes and press OK. These logs will be able to tell you what is exactly happening. Most people aren't having the specific .NET Runtime. And so that's where we'll move to next. You need two different versions to make this work. Go to the 6.000 and download the 64 bit of the SDK, the 64 bit of the core runtime, 64 bit of the desktop runtime, and the 64 bit of the net runtime. After you've downloaded and installed those four, go back, go to the point seven, and download the hosting bundle from this NetCore runtime. After you've downloaded all of those, make sure that yours looks like this and that there's no overlapping runtimes. If you did that correctly, the Aceto server should launch. If it still doesn't launch, go into the search bar, type in path, press enter, go into environmental variables, go into path, edit, and find where it says .NET. Put .NET and move it up to where it's over the 86 the times 86 version if you have that downloaded if you don't even have dotnet there make sure you've restarted your computer and if it's still there and you have dotnet copy and paste this into here by pressing new and putting this address then click ok if the server still doesn't work you're going to have to look at Event Viewer and see which specific runtime is giving you the issue. If your server does start, then it will stop and give you logs, and you'll be able to diagnose it from here. A lot of the times, a checksum error will be the cause, so we're going to start by solving that. Go into the configuration files and the extra configs. It's going to be handy to have Notepad++ to make it really easy. I'm going to change some of these to true. After you've enabled these to true, save your file. Start your server again. And it should give you a lobby registration successful. Now, if it doesn't give you a lobby registration successful and it gives you a port forwarding issue, then you need to port forward. And you have to do that from accessing your router. You access your router with your gateway IP address. If you want to find that, you can type in cmd and type in IP config, and it'll get you your default gateway. Uh, type in the default gateway into here and it'll open up your router settings. From there, you should follow your router settings to port forward, and the ports you will be forwarding are in your configuration files. You can change them, but 
these are right here pretty standard if you're having trouble port forwarding you can also put your IP address into the DMZ zone which puts your connects your private IP to your local IP address so it definitely will be available also make sure in this server config file the track is equal to CSP forward slash and then the version of CSP that you have so we're going to go back and see it's 1061 not the version you have the version that's most compatible and that should be enough settings here in order to allow the AI to take these vehicles and actually use them we're gonna go add capital AI equals fixed we're going to have that and copy it onto every one of these and for the remaining cars that you want to drive you want to put AI equals to none and save if you had CSP enabled and you enable the teleportation this command at the end of the skin should be there if it's not add this in from here start the server and assuming you've port forwarded successfully and you have the content in here the server should be able to start Okay, now that the server has loaded, you see that these are unable to join while you can join these cars. One last thing before we actually join the server is that we're going to go into content, tracks, CSP, the map, we're going to go to the overload layout data from here we're going to change this top surface underscore zero to c s p f a c e underscore zero and save now i'm going to restart the server and wait for it to load okay we joined in and I'm gonna check if we have some traffic there it goes it started spawning in now I haven't messed with any of the settings and so it's not gonna be the most tighten it traffic but once you do you can get it to where it's either heavy traffic very light whatever really you want depending on how much time you're willing to put into customizing it so we see that it works but we notice that there's no teleports and we can change color but we have to be in pits also, there's a pit limiter, uh, there's a speed limiter in pit, and we could change all of these options. So, let's do that now. Enable teleports and changing of colors. And we're going to have to go into the configuration files. And we're going to have to make another file. It's going to be called CSP. 
underscore extra underscore options that I and I uh, it's going to try to save as a txt delete that and put dot I and I open that and you're going to copy these settings uh, you don't need to copy them word for word they've been marked so that you could understand somewhat everything but I'm going to have a link in the description these are the different positions that you can teleport to and I'm going to show you how to get these positions and customize them once you've adjusted all these settings save it and then start the server again Lobby registration successful. We go back to a soto. Okay, so after joining, we see that this little extras is enabled. And now we can change the color. And we can teleport to different locations. Now, in order to customize the locations of the teleports, we're going to want to go into apps, all apps, type in object inspector, find the place that you want to put your new teleport location to, open the object inspector, hold alt and left click on the roof of your car. Uh, it's just always click on the roof or if you're going to click on the body, always click on the body. If you're going to click on something, always click on it when you're getting the coordinates so they're exact. Then you're going to look at the position all the way down here. And these three coordinates are going to be the corresponding position of this new teleport that you want. So if you click this comma, it just copied all these three teleports. So that's how to enable the teleports enable car colors and have AI actually spawning on the road for you to cut up. If you want more AI traffic, add more AI cars. I only added a few just for an example for the server so I didn't have to go through a lot of work, but it is a lot of work to put the server to make the server. So the more server the more cars you can add, the more traffic is going to be. If you just up the traffic density, it's not going to flow as well. You can also remove the names of traffic in the extras. For cars that you have to manually add, you go into content, cars, and you add the cars into here. If you want to find the cars, you go to content, cars, and find a specific car that's not able to be packed. Take the folder. Just copy it and paste it. From there as well, you're going to want to copy the exact name of it. Go into the entry file, entry list. And you can add a card to this list if you want. I'm just going to replace one of the traffic cars. And make it so that we can drive it. And since I didn't add anything, I don't need to go to my server configuration files and change the amount of clients I have. But from there, I would start up the server. And now that car that would be disabled from hacking is now in the server and you're able to join on it. So that's basically how to set up a no hezi server with some AI traffic, teleports, and being able to change colors. If you still have any problems with it, 
and you need troubleshooting, you can leave me a comment. Um, I'll put the Discord in my description and you can talk to me on there and uh, I can try to help some people out. Most of these issues are going to be able to be fixed if you read the logs. The logs are not too hard to look through. When there's no data, you have, you have a checksum error, you could avoid that in the settings. Um, if there's a port forwarding issue, it's a problem with your router. And if you're here at the end of the video and you're having problems with port forwarding, remember that your ports cannot be from the destination point to the point of inbound. It can't be the same. You have to put no specific port for your inbound port and then specify your outborn port for 9600 and 8081 for your HTTP. You also need to connect your private IP address with your public IP address if you don't need to the server your router is already doing it but if it doesn't do that automatically you're going to need to for other people to be able to join you and your friends without having to use a third party software if still that doesn't work your antivirus software may be affecting the ports and closing them off from the server to run or even windows firewall We're going to want to go to Firewall, Advanced Settings, Inbound Rules, New Rule, and we're going to follow the steps to make a TCP, 9600, and make a second one TCP, um, a UDP, 9600. I'm just having a couple of them open. UDP 9600 and uh, 8081 for your inbound for your outbound you don't really actually need that um, so that should be all the steps for port forwarding if still it doesn't work and you haven't even opened this it's definitely the .NET runtime if you got past everything and the server's running but it's giving you now log errors it's probably checksum or your map or you haven't associated the server with this new tracks as uh, cp csp instead of just uh equaling tracks to whatever track it is from there it should just be now slight configurations in your extras and your CSP extras. There's two more things, but we'll have to get into that at another time. For now, good luck and happy driving.